Who's got a pretty decent sense of rhythm? You, I like that confidence. Okay, can you, uh, you see already how bad I am. Can you keep a rhythm with snapping for us? Oh, I thought you meant in a business sense, I was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love the confidence uh, and the truth. Um, is anybody, can anybody keep a rhythm for me? Just, just do it. Okay, everybody join them. Two hands. Stop. Now breathe in. I don't see you breathing in. Breathe in. And breathe out. Okay, now we have to go really fast. Uh, you'll see that there's a handout in your seat. I've given that to you so that you don't need to take notes, so you can just pay attention. Today is going to be interactive, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be fun. So I just want you to stay focused and engaged and have some fun today, okay? Right. So I work for a custom software development company. And what that means is that we build custom systems for people, starting with a vision and working through a process that takes that vision into basically a standard form of instructions that then can be developed and turned into a tangible thing as an output. And my role is at the beginning of that process where the vision is developed, which essentially means that I listen to people's pain points, their problems, their needs, and their desires, and try to help them figure out how they're gonna bring it together. The basic premise for this whole conversation is that business growth and innovation relies on high-performing teams which rely on a shared vision. And there are some very simple techniques that I use every day to try to help people pull their visions together into an organized framework that can be shared with other people. And these techniques are super simple. Visualize. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need cool illustrations or doodles that keep people's attention, although they are helpful. The main thing is just means make things visible. Make things visible so that everybody can see it. Then crowdsource. The entire reason that you have a team is so that you have a range of perspectives and that you have a, a plethora of experience that you can draw on. So if you're not using your team, then you're not really using that value of having all that different perspective. So crowdsource and visualize. Once you've got them on the same page and you've got everybody's perspective, then it's just a matter of iteration. Simply iterate until you've got it down to the thing that you really want to communicate or share or build. That's, that's it. For us, though, we're going to be doing this as an interactive experience, and I want you to demonstrate these techniques. So for us to do that, we need to be in the right frame of mind. What I want you to do, now judging by the breathing exercise, I think you're going to have to build a little more trust with me. Uh, <laughs> What I want you to do, I'm not going to make fun of you, and no one else is. Go ahead and close your eyes if you're comfortable doing it. Close your eyes and imagine somebody that you know personally or that you really admire who is friendly, who is funny, who is creative. And then get out your phone. Get out your phone and go to slido.com and enter this code, S. 665. And that's the URL. Don't go to the App Store. Slido.com and put in that code. S665. Keeping in mind that friendly, creative, funny person that you know or admire. Okay. Now that you're there, you should see a question come up. Use one word to describe to New Zealand describe New Zealand to someone who's never been here. And that's the key, to someone who's never been here, okay? One word to describe New Zealand to someone who's never been here. All right, cool. Green, beautiful, innovative. All right, we're starting to see some themes. 
I, can, I could have guessed the beautiful and the green. I was expecting some more mountains, but yeah, that seems about right. Okay, cool. That's good. Now that you've got that in mind, I want you to flip your thinking, and we're going to answer the same question, but now we're going to say one word to describe Australia to someone who's never been there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> dangerous, dry, hot, flat, spiders. <laughs> you can always trust Kiwis to just love Australia. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Now we're in the right frame of mind. Now you guys got it. Now you're feeling it. Right, okay, great. So, <clears throat> why does this matter? Why do we want to talk about visions? Well, we kind of need to start there before we can actually get into using your newfound fun and sense of humor. Uh, so, the, the reason that we want to talk about this, we should probably start at the start. Oxford says that a vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination and wisdom. Now you've got your imagination going, and you've figured out how to use the tool that's going to allow us to use our collective wisdom. So now we've got 90 people with an imagination, and we're going to spend a little bit of time thinking about the future. Forbes published a study that showed 66,000 respondents, and it rated uh, how engaged they were in their teams and also what behavior their leadership exhibited. And what they found was a strong correlation between these five traits with highly engaged teams and leadership that inspired more than it drove, that resolved conflict and encouraged cooperation, communicated vision and direction, set stretch goals, and built trust. And my personal opinion, personal, is that you cannot really effectively do three of these five things without a vision. It's very difficult to inspire people if you don't have a vision to inspire them towards. It's very difficult to communicate a vision if you do not have a vision. <laughs> it's very difficult to set stretch goals if you don't know where you're going to stretch to. But beyond that, visions are very important from a very practical sense. If you looked at the structure of strategic planning, and granted, there are lots of frameworks out there and everybody's got it different, uh, but this is just one that I think is a very simple and straightforward approach to strategic planning. And what you've got is a template up at the top, same as this agenda over here, uh, that you can use to develop a vision. From there, with your own purpose, mission, and values, you can use that to then create the goals that are going to help you get to that vision. Once you've got those goals, you need a strategy for how you're going to accomplish those goals. And then you're going to build objectives to make sure that you're getting your strategy on the right track. And from each of those objectives are going to be a myriad of initiatives to make sure that you actually meet those objectives. And if you work in software development like us, you may know something like this. But this is actually applicable well beyond software. So once you've got your vision, your goals, your objectives, your initiatives, we then break it down further into parcels of work we call ethics. And you can call it something else. The basic idea is that you're going to have diminishing sizes of work that you're going to be able to do something with. Epics, stories, and tasks. And then you're going to bundle those on a priority basis into releases with these activity streams. And those activity streams could be recruiting for a team. It could be commercials and getting some documents ready. It could be a feature or a, functionality, a piece of functionality in software. And along the way, you're going to have some form of governance where you're evaluating how well what you're building is actually tracking back to that strategic plan that you developed. So we know the visions are important. What do they actually look like? Well, research tells us that good visions, and good being that effective teams use visions that have these traits, are clear. They're easy to understand. They're stable, which means the organization isn't yanking you around all the time. You know where the resources are invested. You know what the right direction is. And they're shared. So everybody understands how the future looks different based on the contributions that you're making today. An interesting note that I wasn't sure if I'd tell you or not, the research also showed that 
the team doesn't actually have to fully support the vision. They just have to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I find this to be a very easy template. It's on your handout. You can use it as you like, but please don't try to, don't, I'm not a dogmatic guy. Don't make this set in stone. James said this is the way you build visions. You can do it how you like. Uh, you have a current state, right? So there's going to be some common cause. Usually if you're an organization or if you want to build a personal vision, you have something that is your uniting force, and that's what you're going to build a current state around so you can understand where you are so then you can dream about the future. You want to identify who the key personas are in that current state, what their needs are, what's standing in the way of them uh, meeting their needs, and what you're going to do about it. It's that simple. So, since we're all from different organizations, I thought one thing definitely unites us. We're all here in Canterbury at Tech Summit. Let's use the Canterbury tech sector as our uniting cause for the demonstration that we're going to run today. At a really, really high level, just to get us a go in on this current state thinking, out of the total 12.5 billion GDP, although we are the third largest tech sector in Canterbury, it's not exactly a close horse race. Uh, we're contributing about 1.5 billion to the GDP, and we've got about somewhere between six and 7,000 people out of the 54,000 people in New Zealand that contribute to the tech economy. And a SWOT, a Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats, is a great way to get a bit of a view of your current state. I took one from CDC for Christchurch City Council that was looking at how to uh, build international businesses in Canterbury, and there are some really positive things that I think we should take pride in here. Some uh, software development is pretty strong here, which is easier to export. There's a good group of successful firms in Canterbury. Uh, there's a real DIY mentality. And people are generally uh, open to sharing their ideas and their information here. But there are also some weaknesses. We've got a small local market. And to supply that small domestic market, we've got a pretty small labor force, which comes with some threats of potential talent shortages, and successful firms moving offshore to follow their larger markets. We all know that there's a lot of literature out there on the link between having available skills and producti productivity in the sector. So this seemed like a good place to drill in for us to have a common cause. But I thought we should test it. So go ahead and grab your phones. And I want you to think what you currently need or what you would really, really like to be able to fulfill your strategy or your dreams for your company, what skill do you really, really need or want? Management? Communication skills. Flexibility, data analytics, sales. Data science. Leadership. OK, cool. So we're starting to see some themes coming out, right? You want people with leadership, sales, data analytics, user experience, and communication skills. OK, cool. So that's what we're going to keep in mind as the kind of people that we're looking for today. When the research shows us that what draws people uh, to decide where they want to live, cost of housing. We're doing pretty well as far as cost of housing compared to Wellington or Auckland. We don't really have any good data on friends and family or childhood stomping grounds. Security, you're a little bit more likely to lose your car in Auckland, but it's not that much of a difference. Uh, and we are also one of the nicer places as far as proximity to work and commute times. As far as the earthquake goes and long-term migration, it's actually kind of stabled off now. And most of the people coming into the Canterbury uh, sector are professionals. Most of them are coming from the UK and Ireland, China, India. And it's dwindling now, but a lot of them are coming also from the Philippines. But there's something really interesting here. Who has a really large economy and tech sector and is nearby, but is not sending us a lot of people? Interesting. So we looked into it, and there are 600,000 Kiwis living in Australia. But there are only 60,000 Australians living in New Zealand. That's more than all of Christchurch living in Australia. And so it got me thinking, that, 
That seems like that's our unifying cause. As the uh, opening showed us, there's nothing that unites Kiwis more than their love of Australia. <laughs> so, with that in mind, we're going to be the Canterbury tech sector, and we want to attract those leadership and communication uh, and those user experience skills. And now we need a way of attracting those people back to the Canterbury tech sector. So, those people that we've put up there in the word cloud, what do you think they need to be lured back to the Canterbury tech sector? Go ahead and throw out your ideas. Just shoot them out there. What are their needs? Good pay. Good pay. OK. Friends and family. Friends and family. Quality of work. What do you mean by quality of work? Uh, fulfilling work. Fulfilling work. OK, meaningful. Yep, cool. What else do we have? Quality of life. Quality of life. Work-life balance, things to do. Yep, cool. I'm sorry? Career options, yeah. What, um, what else? Is that enough? Great. OK. Back to Slido. So what I want you to do is you're going to see those listed. And I want you to vote on what you think is the top need that's going to lure those people back to the Canterbury tech sector. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got our answer. <laughs> OK. Is, are you all good now? Yeah. Cool. So you have work-life balance, good pay, career options. Quality of life. Quality of life. Anything else? Meaningful work. Meaningful work. All right, you should be ready to vote now. Oh, now we got a horse race. OK, good pay seems to be winning. Oh, quality of life jumped up. Kiwis <laughs> must be answering. Good pay, quality of life. Yeah. Adds out of 71 respondents, it looks like people think good pay is what we need. OK, cool. Well, let's leave it there. All right. Great. So now I want to know who out there is a terrible illustrator? Go ahead, raise your hand if you're a terrible illustrator. Now, out of those that have your hand up, how many of you, uh, where'd your hands go? <laughs> how many of you are confident people? Great. Why don't you come on up here? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the keynote stole all my time, so we got to go fast. Okay, go all right. So. Uh, what your name is? Luke. Luke, let's give everybody a round of applause. Luke, thank you very much. You're going to have to get real cozy with these folks. Can you draw something that represents good pay here, please? <laughs> represents good pay? Yeah, and big enough for the people in the back. Can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, but we're not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you, Luke. I need you to stay there. Uh, okay. No, we got to go faster, guys. I'm sorry. Like I said, we're running out of time. So uh, what are the obstacles standing in the way of us offering better pay to these people who we want to come to the Canterbury Tech Sector? Just throw it out there. What are some of the obstacles to us offering better pay? Size of the local economy. Size of the local economy. OK. I'm, I'm sorry? Who said, somebody said something back here. Is that size of business? Yeah, size of, OK. Same. What else? Investment funds. Investment funds? Is that what I heard? Ability to access investment money. Ability to access investment money. What else do we have? Market size. Market size. OK. Well, you want me to write these? Oh, no, no. I, uh, I love that you're doodling, but just <laughs> chill for now. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely getting that confidence. I'm loving it. OK. Um, boards that don't understand the investment required for technology. Ah, OK. So a bit of a knowledge of, t of the value of technology on company boards. OK. Anything else out there? Uh-huh. 
Are you asking me a question, or is that your answer? Hi, Perry. Hi, Perry. Okay. All right. How are you going? Good. All right. So back to Slido. This time we're going to vote on more than one. Or we're going to vote on one, but you're going to have more than one to choose from. Out of those, I want you to choose which one you think is the, the top obstacle that's standing in the way of our people coming here. Yeah, cheers. I don't get any compensation for the keynote taking time? It seems, seems like I'm getting ripped off. All right. OK, cool. Board's not understanding the investment. There you go. <laughs> All right, we have to go faster. Uh, OK, cool. We're, we can't be distracted by that. We're going to let him go with it. How are we going to overcome that? How are we going to overcome boards not understanding the investment in technology? Education. Education for boards. OK. Younger directors, interesting. OK. Diverse directors. Diverse directors. Hey, I like that. That one's good. That's enough? <laughs> okay, back to Zalido. Um, okay. So, you're going to vote now. What you see is the top diverse directors. That's you. Can you please draw diverse directors for us? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so, now can you do the solution as diverse directors? <laughs> okay. Look, I know it seems counterintuitive. We always say, hey, don't go into solution mode. Don't go into solution mode. But the reality is, if you think about companies like SpaceX, uh, they, want to put inter, uh, they want intergalactic life, right? That is a solution for what they see as problems on Earth. You think about uh, the Boring Company. Mass transport is a solution. So these visions are solutions, even though we always kind of say, don't go right into solution mode. OK, so thank you. <laughs> Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we have to go faster. So uh, this is our vision here. We've got, as a Canterbury tech sector, we want to attract those communication, sales uh, kinds of people here. And we need to be able to offer them better pay. And we think that a stumbling block to doing that is boards that don't understand the investment in technology. And so what we want to do is we want to encourage a diversity of boards in the Canterbury tech sector. Bingo. And that's our vision. So the whole thing, I know it's a bit of a, a cheesy way to do it in that you've got 90 people trying to do this in now like 15 or 20 minutes, um, which is a bit of an insane way to come up with a vision that's going to affect a $1.5 billion sector. Uh, but the principles are the, are the same. You would just do it with more thought, more consideration, more data, more research, more healthy debate. But that incremental back and forth, getting people on the same page, using the wisdom of the crowd, and visualizing it is the exact same way that we help our partners. So this is something that we did for Environment Canterbury's Business Information Services team to describe who they are and what they do. This is something that we did for Regenerate Christchurch to explain how they thought that we should stay on the same track uh, that they had originally proposed with their vision. And this is something that we did for New Zealand Spinal Trust to help them explain a view that they had on ACC versus Minis uh, Ministry of Health path for the people that they look after. We've gone through this simple template, which you have in your handout, which has been the way that we've created our vision. And from there, you would create goals to how do we get that diversity in the boards. And you would set your objectives. And then you would come up with initiatives that would cascade into a stream of work that you could actually govern and execute on. That is the entire way that we would do this. It's just a very simplified version of it. And We've done this uh, entire thing visually. We've used Slido to collect your wisdom, and we've iterated on it to get it down to this beautiful illustration. <laughs> the whole point of this was that business growth and innovation relies on high-performing teams, which rely on a shared vision. But I can't leave you there, because I don't believe in it. Here's the problem. <laughs> business growth and innovation has become something that we've taken for granted as always a good thing. I think it is a good thing, usually. And it certainly is an enabler. 
But I think it's really, really important for us to ask ourselves what kind of growth, what kind of innovation are we building visions for? So to finish this whole thing off, I'd like to invite you to go back to Slido one more time. And I want you to think about, if you have grandchildren, I want you to think about them. If you have children, I want you to think about their children. If you don't have either, I want you to think about possible potential future grandchildren. <laughs> so what is one word you would use to describe the future you're building for your grandchildren? Sustainable. Who's working on the scary one? You guys might want to change your ways. <laughs> safe. OK, thank you. Yes. Great. Exciting, safe, sustainable, livable, educated, hopeful. Yeah, there's some scary ones in there, too. And that's the reality of it. Our future is uncertain. And that's why we need a world with better visions. I thank you very much for your time. I hope you've been, learned something. And if you want to have a chat later, feel free to meet up with me later. <laughs> Thank you very much.